All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. Okay, so uh, today, or actually 20 hours ago, Wedden1051919 asked a very good question, very interesting question. Are the unsaved asleep also until judgment, or are they in hell right now? All right, so begs the question, what is hell? Right, and so, um, this is in, uh, you know, in reference to a, a video that I made, What It's Like to Die. And the main thing here is that when people die, let's say when saved people die, they don't go to heaven. It's only when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven are we resurrected from the dead and ascend up to heaven. Now you think about Jesus. He came into the flesh. He is God manifest in the flesh. And he presented himself as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And not ours only, but for the whole world. The sins of the whole world. Alright, so... He died, he laid down his life, and then he rose from the dead, and he ascended to heaven. He has led the way for us. And so we that are born of God will follow him. All right, so he went to the grave, and he ascended, or he resurrected and ascended up to heaven. So when he returns, we will all ascend up to heaven First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And we will meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, so, what about, I mean, that right there, that, that establishes the fact that nobody has ascended up to heaven but Jesus. He's the only one. That's uh, John 3. Uh, verse 13, when Jesus says, No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Alright, so he's the only one. And he's the only way. Alright. <clears throat> now, what about... Uh, okay, so there's this idea that, when, you know, saved people go to heaven when they die, and then... Unsaved people go to hell when they die. Now, let's sort of uh, dive into that. Okay? And let's see, where do I want to start here? Let's start with uh, Acts chapter 2. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. All right, now let's slow down and look at this word by word. Okay. He, David, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his Christ's soul was not left in hell. Alright, so there's, I've heard people argue, well, uh, you know, Jesus didn't go to hell, blah, blah, you know. Uh, and they, they get all fussy about it. <laughs> and uh, it's a dumb argument, uh, in my opinion, because it's, there's no reason to make that argument, and then there's no reason to get upset about it. Okay. 
So that his, so if you want to say, well, that's not talking about Christ. It's talking about David. Well, then you're saying David went to hell. Either way you look at it, there's no way around it. All right. And then the third way is to not believe the word of God. And that's trouble for your soul. All right, so he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Okay. Um, let's see. Where can we find that in uh, the book of Psalm? I got to think about this a little bit. I got to think about this just a little bit. There it is. Uh, Psalm Psalm 16, verse 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Okay. So, think about that. That means a person is in hell and then that person's soul is not left in hell. So, you understand, surely, that the only opportunity for anybody to get saved is while they are alive. And then when they're in hell, they are dead. Alright, so, there's no way for somebody to go to hell... And then believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then be taken out of hell. I, th that whole scenario is nonsense. Okay, if the scenario of, well, you're unsaved, so you go to hell. In that scenario, okay, that's, that's um, something that's always bothered me since I was a little kid. It really has, because I remember... Uh, back in 1996 or 97, and uh, before I was a believer, I went to a church on a Thursday night, and the preacher stood there and said his mother was up in heaven looking down on him. And what do you say? You know, the poor guy. Uh, you know, you, we can all relate to how hard that is to lose your mother, right? So nobody's going to argue. It's too sensitive. But the reality is, nobody has ascended to heaven. Jesus says it himself. No man has ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So, Jesus is the only one. So if nobody's ascended to heaven, what about the other way? Okay, so, um, for so, I think the issue is this: you got to get rid of this idea of when you die, you go to heaven, or you go to hell. Judgment does not take place until the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, so if David went to hell. You know David will be lifted up out of hell. Right? Just as Jesus was lifted up out of hell. Okay? So what does it mean when it says hell? Okay. Um, so I want to use Luke 16 as an example. All right, and the word hell is mentioned one time in uh, verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, <clears throat> excuse me, being in torment and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus, Lazarus in his bosom. All right, so there's a, a description of being in hell, being in torment, but... <laughs> think about this he's in hell 
and he sees Abraham. Think about that. He not only sees Lazarus, but he sees Abraham. Is Abraham in hell? Well, what do you think? If Abraham, if the promises of eternal life is to Abraham and his seed, and I just showed you that Christ was in hell, and here we have a uh, verse implying that Abraham is seen in hell. And the promises of eternal life is to Abraham and his seed, and that seed is Christ. Now think about that. <laughs> but, you know, glory to God that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and ascended to heaven and he will return for us and when he returns we will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air all right think about this and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and he's in hell talking to Abraham think about that and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and sin Lazarus that he may dip the finger, I'm sorry, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So here we're getting an idea that there's there's a uh, how do I say this um, that there are parts, okay? I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art torment, tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So, in hell, there is a great gulf fixed between the saved and the unsaved. Right? No matter how you want to look at it, that's what the scripture is implying. That even though they're all in hell, there's a great gulf fixed between the saved and the unsaved. Alright. So now, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then the saved are lifted up from hell into the air to meet the Lord. And that's when that's the moment we are changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet at the end of the world all right and again let's go to um let's see here. i'm not sure what we got here uh psalm 1 139 verse 8 if i send up to heaven thou art there if i make my bed in hell Behold, thou art there. All right, so again, if you I'm sure you probably heard people argue that, well, Jesus never went to hell, and Jesus would never go to hell, and only, nah, 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 nah. Well, is hell more powerful than Jesus? Is hell more, I mean, if Jesus, okay, how do I say this? If God is there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If God is there, what are you saying? And Jesus isn't? He never, or he wasn't, I should say. He's never been to hell. He wouldn't never go to hell. If Jesus would never see hell, then Jesus is not God. That Jesus is God. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. God is there in heaven, in hell, wherever. And Jesus is God Almighty. Make no mistake about that. So the whole idea that Jesus couldn't go to hell 
is just lunacy in my opinion it doesn't make any biblical sense whatsoever okay so um all right where was i going with this give me a second here if i ascend up to heaven thou art there if i make my bed in hell behold thou art oh, okay so i wanted to just real quickly you think about jonas okay think about jonas and uh how uh, he was for three days in the belly of hell right and said i cried by reason of mine infliction unto the lord and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried i and thou heardest my voice all right and we get a similar scripture in the new testament uh, let's see let me see if i can find it here for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay, so if you can relate this hell and the heart of the earth, and you'll connect the dots, if you will, and understand that this really, as simply as I could put it, is an indication that hell is just the grave. All right now, this this is important. I hope you're still paying attention because I'm going to show you something that's should wrap it up. Okay, so don't go anywhere. So if we do a word study on just the word hell. We see that it's mentioned 54 times in, throughout the whole entire Bible. And it, it takes, if you were just to read every, it might take five minutes most. Read every example of the word hell being used. All right, and make sure that you understand the context of each time this word is mentioned. It's one of the important aspects of doing word studies, I think. And it's very helpful if you ever come to a, a verse and you're like I'm not I don't remember that I don't remember that well go back and read it um, and understand it and you did not just read it but understand it and then uh, that'll help give you a lot of peace a lot of wisdom understanding okay so you notice um, as we scroll through here um, I don't know how to say this here so you notice that um, none of these fit this idea of eternal, uh, um, eternal uh, damnation. I guess. Um, how do I say that? Uh, not. I don't know how to even describe uh, this uh, this uh, version of heaven and hell that was pre that's that really is presented. Um, and by a lot of people okay so let me think about this second all right so when we die uh the the, the idea is that we go to heaven or we go to hell okay let's let's try to just forget about that okay and think about hell is naked before him and destruction has no covering if you go and read all of this the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. You can see, ultimately and eventually, that there's a different context to the word hell than what is being presented by men. Okay, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. And let them go down quick into hell. And that this really just means death. Right? In the grave. Right? And so the good news is Christ has come to lift us up out of the graves, out of hell, and into eternal life. That's really the good news, right? Her feet go down to death. Her, t her steps take hold on hell. Now, look at the correlation, the connection, here between death and hell 
Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. See the relation between hell and death? All right. Hell and destruction. The way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from the hell, from hell beneath. All right, so hell is beneath, heaven is above. All right, so when we die, we go to the ground where we came from. And the good news is Jesus has ascended above and promised to lift us up when he returns all right thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell hell and destruction are never full okay now um <clears throat> excuse me okay so if we could just go all the way Keep going and keep going and keep going. Oh, I guess I'll point out uh, one or two more things here. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. Very interesting stuff here, in my opinion. Okay. So, uh, in the New Testament, uh, thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. All right, and uh, we see a, a number of these um, warnings that if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast in hell. So again, we see a correlation, a relation between perish and hell. Right? Um, I think it's important to look at these not as a judgment of eternal hell, if you will. All right? But just uh, um, in the context of the grave. All right? And it's important, I think, also to understand that Satan is not a god. Right? Because when you imagine Satan as a god, then you, and you imagine Jesus as God, and the, the heavens above are his kingdom and his throne and what have you, and then Satan also being a god, then below us is his uh, kingdom and his throne and that sort of thing. Like dueling gods or something. Okay, well, there's only one God, period. Number one. And there's no, you know, um, it's, it's not, um, there's no, I mean, there's just no other God. It's just Jesus. So there is no eternal hell. Okay. There's the eternal kingdom of God, an everlasting kingdom, but hell is not an everlasting kingdom, period. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul, or soul and body, in hell. <clears throat> okay. Now, remember that verse there. All right. Thou Capernaum, be exalted, shall be brought down to hell. Capernaum. I don't know how to say that name. Okay. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That church will never perish. All right, it's there's just no other way to look at it. Hell is a word for death and the grave. It's not a 
uh, you know, eternal hellfire, if you will. It's not eternal, period. All right. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The damnation of hell, okay? So we know we will be delivered out of hell should we die. Christ was delivered up out of hell. And those of us that follow him will also be delivered up. The damnation of hell is... We're going to find out here in a second. Okay. And again, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It's better that your foot perish than your whole, than your body and your soul and everything perish. Okay. Is that Capernaum? Capernaum? I don't know how to say that word. doesn't matter. After he has killed, has power to cast into hell, yeah, I say unto you, fear him, which is God. Fear God. All right, and again, Luke 6. All right, oh, did I, uh, yeah, I want to go back to Acts 2, okay. Remember, um, talked about, uh, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch, David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of his, that of his, I'm sorry, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. Christ never sinned. All right, this Jesus has God raised up. Wherefore, we are, we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith, in him, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Again, this is in reference to the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up in the air and our enemies gathered at our feet. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. This is exactly what it's referring to. And we hear this referenced all throughout the Bible. And it starts in John, um, it starts in Genesis Chapter 3, verse 16, if I'm remembering correctly, verse 16, When the Lord said unto the serpent, I will make thine enemies, I'm sorry, excuse me. When the Lord said unto the serpent, um, something, I forget. It's verse 15, I, I just knew it. Verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is a direct um, reference that in Acts 2, until I make thy foes thy footstool. This is directly related to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent till I make thy foes thy foot stool. So, all right, and this is, man, this is prof, this is the plan the whole time is to create this separation between the saved and the unsaved. All right. So the end of the world is coming. And it's a big deal. The Bible talks about it over and over and over again. Same thing, over and over and over again. Okay. Now, um, let's see. And I wanted to 
get down here to the book of Revelation. All right, well, we got four mentions here. One, two, three, and four. All right, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. All right, we're going to read all four mentions. Okay, Revelation 1, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Again, we see these words paired together. And have the keys of hell. And you think about that. Jesus has the keys of hell. Why would you argue that he can't go to hell when he has the keys of hell? These arguments are nonsense, okay? Nonsense. I mean, I, to me, it almost, I feel like people are offended. Like, hell is their home, and they're offended that people say Jesus went there and left. I, mean, I think, it's just, to me, weird. It's weird. Okay, so, uh, chapter 6. And I looked, and behold, a pale, ho pale horse, and his name said on him was death, and hell followed with him. Again, these words are related, right? Revelation 20, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Now think about this. Now, that's three of the four. So we're going to get to the fourth one. And hopefully the fourth one sort of wraps it up and makes everything else make sense. All right, Revelation 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Death and hell are cast into the lake of fire so there is no more death and there is no more hell they are cast into the lake of fire this is the second death all right and this directly relates to you know what we read uh, for example in 1 Corinthians 15 then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory right, death and hell are cast in the lake of fire this is the second death there is no more death and there is no more hell all right now think about that all right so, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we, in a moment, are, in the twinkling of an eye, we are changed. All right? We are lifted up. We go to heaven, if you will. Now, when this happens, hell is thrown into the lake of fire to teach... <laughs> I, I can't even explain uh, the nonsense is being taught. Okay, so the okay, I don't know how to say this. Okay, so people will say that when you die, you go to heaven or you go to hell. All right, so let's let's uh, fast forward to the end of the world. People are going up to heaven. And then, um, when that happens, then death is thrown into the lake of fire. Right? So the, all the unsaved people that are still alive, the moment Jesus comes, in the clouds of heaven, uh, they, what are they, they're thrown in hell for a few minutes? Um... But hell is not a resting spot. You understand that, right? Uh, the idea that we go to heaven forever and then they go to hell forever, that's, that's not biblical. Right? 
So, uh, I, you know, to me, uh, this idea uh, that uh, people, uh, you know, go to hell and that hell is uh, equivalent to heaven, it's not, it's not even close. And I think it's very important to understand that when Jesus comes, it's the end of the world and there's going to be new heavens and a new earth. There's not going to be a new hell. Hell is thrown into the lake of fire. There is no more hell. There is no more death. These words, these things are synonymous with one another. Death, hell, and the grave. They're all synonymous one with the other. It's not a kingdom of Satan or whatever. It's not eternal. All right. Yeah, okay, so that's all I got. That's all I got. I just want to try to uh, shine some light on this. I, I think that's a very great, a very good question, a very good, um, very interesting question. Are the unsaved asleep also until judgment, or are they in hell right now? The unsaved that are dead are asleep. And they are in hell right now and then judgment comes and the unsaved that are in hell are cast into the lake of fire this is the second death I quite frankly I think this is worse than what anybody can imagine and they're gonna be it's gonna be known to them that have done evil those that have done evil will know the judgment given to them all right I guess that's all I got I appreciate that question uh, it's very interesting and uh, please follow up if you think I got something wrong Let's talk about it. I don't know why people are afraid to talk. Oh, why are people afraid to share a different thought, a different idea? I don't know. But that's how we get sharp. You know, challenge one another. You know, let's let's learn together, right? And so, uh, thank you, Wedding One Hundred Five One Nine One Nine. I appreciate it very much.